Thank you. Good morning, everyone. The song of death. But before that, how are you? Come on, this is April first. This is my day. Say louder. How are you? That's about it. But how are you going to die? Are you dead yet? How is your death coming along? Have you ever imagined why we did not use death as part of a greeting? Well, the solution is quite common. In the way it is that we avoid death. Well, all living organisms avoid death. I mean, in a way, all living organisms are programmed to do two things: is to reproduce and to survive. In human term, we call it to have sex and to live. But then, I mean, certain some human being will prefer to have sex more than living. That's why we call it safe sex, and so we actually avoid talking about death so much that we do not want to include this into our day-to-day -day conversation. Now, too bad. Next 15 minutes, I'm going to talk about death with you. What is the sound of death? What to do when you heard the sound of death? Last but not the least, there is a way and a story I'm going to share with you. Is that How to convert the song of death to the song of life? No delay. What is the song of death? Bang! A gunshot, and then a bullet penetrates your sternum, torn apart your aorta. You bled half of your blood into your thoracic cage in no time. Within seconds, you're dead. Bam! Sting will. Crash into your chest, collapse both lung. You can no longer breathe. Within minutes, you're dead. Or if you end up in ICU with a heart attack, the sound supposed to be beep, beep, beep. All of a sudden, become beep. You're dead. Your heart is stopped, but you heard the long beep, and you're not dead yet. Meaning the wire is loose. So don't worry. Happened a lot in our hospital as well. So if you look in this. From life to death, the sound that you heard of this bang, bomb, beep happened at the moment of death. So therefore, the sound of death can be the sound that's heard at the moment of death. But allow me to take on a different scenario. Now, this is a different day. It's a nice rainy day, but you still like to go jogging. So you're jogging down the slope, down the slope, but you slip. You slip and then you fell and you heard the sound crack. Oh no, something is wrong. So good that you still have your iPhone. You call for help. You were taken to the hospital like the Prince of Wales, and this is what they find: your hip is fractured, the femoral neck is fractured, nice and clean. So you need operation. You were taken to the operation room. They do internal fixation. No problem. You survive the surgery. However. About at day ten, your leg is swollen. Sorry, I chose this picture. I don't know whether you're a man or a lady with a hairy leg, but either case, your right leg is swollen. The doctor had done a Doppler ultrasound and confirmed that you actually had a blood clot in it. But again, it's no problem. We start you on some blood thinner and call Coumadin, and then you went home. You you're in good shape. However, after you went home, your mum decided to give you some Chinese medicine to boil bowl, the yin yang balance after the surgery. But without knowing the fact that the herb had actually interfered with the action of the coumadin, and then at day 21, all of a sudden, while you're at home, you feel short of the breath, a heaviness in the chest, and your heart is pounding like crazy. Dial 999, rush in the hospital, and then the doctor actually was fine. There's a clot going into your left pulmonary vessel, as shown here. It's called pulmonary embolism. So while the doctors are figuring out What to do for you? Another clot fell apart and then blocked your vessel as well. So with that, they try to resuscitate you the best they can. However, you die. Sorry, you die. So let's look at this scenario again. From the birth to death, the sound of crack happened actually 21 day before death. Not right at the moment of death. So, sound of death can also be defined as a sound at the moment that initiate the process of 
death. So dying is not just a moment. Death is a process. So this dying process can occur like an accident, just as I told you, or it can be a disease, a chronic disease like diabetic. Then when the doctor tells you about your disease, it may be just an initiation of your dying process. But just a minute, what if you have a congenital disorder? That means your dying process starts at the moment of birth. So looking at all these three together, you can have different kind of sound that you can hear that's associated with the dying process. Can be the crack, can be the doctor's diagnosis of your disease, or in the case of congenital disease, it may be the first cry of a newborn. That is the sound of her death. What I'm trying to tell you is this: death is actually always with you. You try to ignore it, you don't think about it. You think that it doesn't come to you because you're the lucky one, but like it or not, death is with you any moment at birth. So moving on, what to do now? Now I scare you that death is imminent with you. What to do? Well, before that, let me just introduce to you what is actually the most common sound of death. Take a guess. What is the most common sound of death? Anybody? Bang! Well, not quite yet. It's actually C. The word C is actually the most common sound of death. The word C stands for cancer and cardiovascular disease. Well, I'm not joking. Come on, this is the statistic from the United States. Up on 2014, cardiovascular disease and cancer account for over two thirds of all deaths. So since I'm a cancer specialist, I'm going to take the example of、uh, Mr. Chen, a 56-year-old man with cough. He's a school teacher, just about going to retire, doing exercise normally. But then he had cough for two weeks, and then one day he coughed some blood. And then for that he went for a chest X-ray, and long behold, there's a lung mass. So next thing he did is a PET scan. The PET scan is stand for positron emission tomography, which is injection of a radioactive glucose in the blood, and the glucose is picked up by the cancer, shown as a black spot. Every black spot you see of him is a piece of cancer in the liver, in the bone, in the lung. And then the doctor took a biopsy, and you can see the ugly cancer cell that is called adenocarcinoma of the lung. So he actually has stage four lung cancer now. That is his sound of death. So he heard the sound of death when the doctor told you, "You have stage four, which is end stage lung cancer." So what else may he hear? What kind of sound he may hear after this diagnosis of C word, the cancer word? Well, he hear a lot of noise. You say, "Don't eat this, don't eat that, don't never touch chicken." You eat a lot of asparagus. Go for this Chinese herbal medicine. Practice qigong. Never take chemo. It will not do you any good. All the friend and relative surrounding him were giving all kind of advice. However, I'm going to show you what is the best thing to do when you hear the C word. Want to test it? Yes, again. Now we're better than that this day. The best thing you can do is the S word. Well, no, it's not shit. Okay, <laughs> you say you get cancer. Okay, shit, man. <laughs> yeah, you can do that, but it's not going to cure your disease. But as as you stand for science, why is that? Well, it's very simple because cancer is science. We study it. We learn a lot about it. Cancer is the cell that's mutated that has actually inhibited growth. Grow continuously and invade the surrounding area. More than that, it actually can migrate through the vascular and lymphatic system. It travels. Other cells cannot travel, but cancer cells can travel. But with this ability to grow continuously and able to travel, they were able to kill. They migrate to the bone, break the bone, causing pathological fracture. They migrate to the brain, causing you disability in talking, eating, and walking, resulting in death. They migrate to the liver. Obviously, it's a dead liver. 
that you causing hepatic liver dysfunction, and then you turn jaundice. Or you can migrate to the pleura, inducing a lot of fluid, so much so that your lung actually drown your own body fluid, the pleural effusion. So cancer is science, but this cancer with the ability to grow can kill. That sounds quite sad. However, what can we do? I'm going to share with you the top science that we can offer you with cancer management. What to do with this C word when you heard it is this top bit of science. Are you ready for it? Well, this is the alphabet. Not just a simple alphabet from Sesame Street, but it's a set alphabet that actually represents the cancer gene. This is a list of driver oncogene. We have studied and learned that these are the gene upon mutation are the ones that drive the cancer growth. Nowadays, we accumulate a lot of knowledge about it. So just to a lot touch of academic stuff, I try to avoid that. Cancer gene is actually the interesting gene that causes the tumor genesis to get the cancer to get going. Right now, we know about 140 of them. And each one of them, most of them, actually are being in charge of either cancer death, apoptosis, cancer growth, or the control of the genetic information. Any defect or combination of this defect will result in cancer cell or the cell to grow continuously and being able to migrate. So understanding of it, controlling it, inhibiting it, is one good way to treat cancer, the sound of death. So I'm going to introduce to you my baby, which is called EGFR receptor gene, which I worked on for over 10 years. Very simple. There's a receptor on the cell surface that receives signal from the growth hormone. Usually, only when it is received the signal that it starts to grow. But then, upon the mutation in the receptor area, then the signal becomes continuous to grow. And then the, this continuous signal just goes down and then resulting the cell to grow continuously. So in principle, if you're able to inhibit it, cancer will stop growing. And this is exactly what I've proven in Asia. This is called a study that we have done on over 1,200 patients, demonstrating fact that the green line, which is the target therapy called gefitinib, better than chemotherapy for mutation positive patient. But on the other hand, if a mutation negative patient, the yellow line, the chemotherapy is actually better than green line, the target therapy. This is the birth of personalized medicine according to genetic information for lung cancer. And it's happening right here in Hong Kong and also in Asia Pacific area. So science, help. Going back to Mr. Chen, with this picture, he was you know, in big trouble with symptom, cough, and also with bone pain. So we actually tested him, confirmed him to have a UGM mutation by PCR, and then start him on the pill called Jufitilib, and within two months, this is what happened to his scan. We did not cure him. However, we make him live longer, better, one pill a day, back to a, being a teacher, doing what he liked to do. This is what science can do when you hear the sound of death. Moving on, the last part. How would you convert the sound of death to the song of life. You can live longer, but can you really make it into the song of life? Limit by time, I'm only going to share with you one story. A story of a hero, my hero, and also hero to a lot of people in Hong Kong. And that is Mr. James Wong. Famous writer, songwriter, actor, singer, Cho Hao expert. He is actually influenced the Hong Kong culture all by himself. He also chain smoke, and he became my patient in 2001. But he make the wishes that to live a normal life as much as he can, the way he always been, regardless of diagnosis stage four lung cancer when I first met him in 2001. But he had one problem. He is a celebrity. He doesn't want anyone to know about it except his own wife. So I have to keep the secret with him, but which is not a problem usually. But then one problem comes. After I treated him for a while, started him on chemotherapy, he was doing better, he said, Tony, 
I am just being invited to host a talk show for Asia TV. A talk show host, well, he's quite good at it. It's not a problem for him, but one problem. He lost all his hair from chemotherapy. How can he go out being talk show host without people knowing about his cancer? So he only ended up two choices. Either he forfeit the opportunity, or he go out and let people know that he got cancer. Maybe he got even better rating with that. But he doesn't want to do either. He said, I want to do it. He think of a box. And now, this is the show that he has done. The three bald head guy. So he invite two other famous bald guy, and then to do the show with him. And so as if he really shave his head for this two guy. This become one of the popular show at that time in 2001, 2002. So popular it's become adopted by Taiwan, and they moved to give the show in Taiwan. So diagnosis of stage four lung cancer, doing a talk show with no one knowing about his own diagnosis because he want to live the way he want to be. But things doesn't stop there. After the show, one day, we had a lunch together, yam cha, and he said, among many Cho Hao, he said that I want to do a PhD. I say, what? I said, why do you want to do PhD? The most famous guy, you don't need a PhD. He said, I want to do it because I always want to do it, because I never have time, now I have extra time, I want to do it. The other reason why he wanted to do it is the simple fact that he's the best person to do it, doing PhD on Canton Park. No better person in Hong Kong can do that as a PhD thesis. I can't deny him the opportunity. I said, although your condition is not so stable, but we try our best. Nine months later, this is his PhD thesis, and which is in June 2003. He finished his thesis, and then two months later, he got his PhD. No longer just Jim Sok, it's Dr. Jim Sok. In the face of a stage four diagnosis, you want to finish a PhD with the hard work you have done. And only in November 2004, we announced his death. He died as Dr. Jim Sok, but that's not the most important message for him. The most important fact is that he heard the sound of death, but he converted to the song of life. How can he do it? What did he do? Well, if you look into life equal to living, equal to dying, there's a two way of looking into it. First, you can look at it as a concurrent event, but more living, when you go dying, you've got less living, more dying. So a lot of people will, at the moment of the diagnosis of cancer, of a serious illness, facing death, they are doing more dying than living. They see life is going to end. A lot of my patients ask me, Doctor, am I Deng Se? Am I waiting to die? I say, yes, you are. So am I. Let's wait together. So this is what happened. Waiting to die is a conceptual uh, action. But this is the way I see life. Dying and living are parallel events. Why? Because you are dying at the moment of birth. So all the events after that, a concurrent happening. So even though you got diagnosis, all across the time, you have the same thinking. I'm going to die tomorrow anyway. I'm going to live today as well as I can. If you are able to confront death, you are able to confront life in the same time. So even when the message, the sound of death arrive, it doesn't bother you because you have always been existing with living and dying in the same moment. Allow me to summarize. Sun of death is always around us because death is with us, and so we have to recognize the existence. What to do? Well, we have to remain radical, rational, and also we have to remain scientific when we confront it, such that we can prolong the survival the best we can with the help of the science and the knowledge. Last but not the least, if we are able to do living and dying simultaneously, we will know how to celebrate life simultaneously. So I would like to share with you Mark Twain. The fear of death follows the fear of life. A man who lived fully is actually prepared to die at any time. With that note, 
I thank you for the past 15, 20 minutes sharing about death with me. I wish all of you to have the best of the life and best of the death to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,